PhD Virtual Backup and Replication version 6.2 introduces CloudHook, which lets you store your virtual machine backups in the cloud. CloudHook provides a powerful, easy, and affordable solution for long-term or off-site storage to either complement or in some cases replace tape. Note that CloudHook requires a separate license update after the initial trial license has expired. To acquire a CloudHook license, contact PhD Virtual by visiting the website or by using the number displayed at the end of this video. In this video, I'll demonstrate how to configure PHD Virtual Backup to take advantage of this new feature. The first step is to select a virtual backup appliance that will be configured to use cloud storage. You can either deploy a new VBA or use an existing appliance. I'm going to use a new VBA on which I've just entered my hypervisor credentials. In the configuration area of the PHD console, at the Backup Storage tab, I can see four additional storage type options. When I select one, I can see a note letting me know that cloud storage requires a configured WriteSpace location. I'll click the link, which brings me over to the WriteSpace tab. On VMware, WriteSpace serves two purposes. It provides a place to run instantly recovered VMs, and as of version 6.2, it can also be used for caching backup data that's being sent to the cloud. The amount of space allocated can be adjusted using the slider control at the bottom of the dialog. For Citrix, WriteSpace is used only for caching cloud backup data, so no additional options are required. To cache data, the WriteSpace requires a virtual disk attached to the VBA. At this point, I'll use the hypervisor client and attach a new virtual disk to my VBA virtual machine. The size of the disk attached should be equal to, at a minimum, 50% of your daily change data. In a typical environment, change data is roughly 5% of the total size of all of your virtual disks. So a disk that equals at least 2.5% of your total storage should be sufficient. After attaching the disk, I'll change over to the console again and click Configure. I'll click Refresh to see the new disk, then use the controls to add it before closing the WriteSpace configuration dialog. Now I can head back over to the Backup Storage tab and complete my storage configuration. Since I have an existing Amazon S3 account, I'll make sure that's selected from the Storage Type drop-down menu to display the required fields. Each cloud storage type requires a storage path, which is the bucket or container that you created when you opened your cloud storage account. You can log into your cloud storage account web page to find the name you used. Along with the bucket or container, you can also create one or more subfolders by adding a forward slash after the bucket or container name, then the name of the folder. This can be very useful if using the same bucket with multiple VBAs. Just note that Rackspace does not support creating additional subfolders. I'm going to create two folders, Demo and Backup, within my PHDVB bucket. After the storage path, I'll enter a file prefix. This is a string that's added before the name of each file written to the cloud storage path for additional identification purposes. I'm going to enter BDS for Backup Data Store. If using Rackspace, which doesn't support subfolders, the prefix allows you to write to the same bucket with multiple VBAs. Next, I'll paste in my account credentials and then supply and confirm a passphrase to use for encryption. The passphrase can be any string or phrase you'd like to use. Just note that this is required if you ever need to connect to the same backup data store using a new VBA, so don't forget it. Finally, I'll save my changes and restart the VBA. When the appliance restarts, I'm ready to create backup jobs and start storing data in the cloud. After the trial period, a CloudHook license update is required to continue backing up data to cloud storage. To apply this update, you simply need to upload the CloudHook license update file to the VBA. This is accomplished in the same manner as applying a VBA update patch. I'll head over to the Support tab and click Upload Appliance Patch. I'll find the license update file and click Open. When applied, I can see the update details displayed beneath my VBA's version information. When using cloud storage for backups, there are a few things to note. Since there's no limit on the amount of storage available from your cloud provider, the storage thresholds for warning and stop are disabled, as there's no way to accurately determine these values. Similarly, on the dashboard, VBAs configured with cloud storage display free storage as infinite. 
Also, cloud backup stores are not supported for use as replication data sources. Most cloud storage providers bill for services based on a few factors, including both data size and requests. When using cloud storage for backups, you should periodically check your cloud storage account to monitor your data usage until you become familiar with your monthly averages. For additional information about PHD Virtual Backup and Replication, visit the PHD Virtual website at www.phdvirtual.com.